Hey, welcome to Divergent Paths. I am the host of said Divergent Paths, Dan Dunford. Um, thanks to, as always, those of you who listen, um, really appreciate you. Uh, it's 1am on a m- Monday morning and I'm recording this really late, which is fun. Um, you know, I'm not tired or anything. It's, it's great. Uh, so this week, um, well, first, uh, yesterday now, um, had the very first Radical Brass show at Spectrum, uh, Jay Rosen's concert, which yes, I've been talking about a lot, but, uh, if you weren't there, you missed a really good show, um, had a good time, recorded some of it, I'll be releasing it, uh, either this week or next week, I'm not sure yet, um, Jay's just such a great musician, had a good time, and there will be more of those coming, uh, Next month will be the incredible trombonist Will Lang. He does so much great stuff. He's he's done had so many pieces written for him, um, and he's done a lot of really cool stuff. So looking forward to talk to him. Talking to him. He doesn't know he's going to be talking to me yet, but he'll find out probably sometime this week. Uh, so this week's episode is is my friend. Uh, Trevor New, he's, well, awesome, New York sounds. <laughs> this is what happens when you live down the street from a police precinct. Um, yeah, Trevor, he's a wonderful violist, um, really cool guy. We ta- got into some really interesting stuff that I hadn't really thought about and um, hadn't really broached with anyone yet. Um, we talk a lot about uh, his passion for music education, um, and you know how he approaches teaching, why you know his his background with that. Uh, also, um, talking about injuries and and how, dealing with those mentally and physically. Uh, so you know we had a good time. Uh, he came up here. Um, it was it was good. I always love hanging out with Trevor. Um, we play together. Uh, and a few different, we've played together several different times and in different things. And, you know, he's just a good guy to hang out with. Um, so okay, just the interview, I'll make it a little bit shorter. Um, so listen in and, uh, I hope you enjoy my talk with Trevor. Um, and yeah, next week is my big episode, uh, leading up into the next Chelsea symphony concert. Um, so be ready for that. Uh, it's going to be a good one. And as always, um, if you like the podcast, please subscribe, uh, leave me a review. I would very much like to get some feedback on there and it does good, good reviews, do good things for me on iTunes. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, enjoy your week and, uh, yeah. Bye. First person to like bike here. Oh uh, yeah. Not just be a, a lamo and, and take the train. Uh you know, I really appreciate it when, when people make an effort. And I would say that biking fifteen miles definitely qualifies. Um, so <laughs> yeah, <the laughs> thanks f- for that. Fifteen miles was an accident. <laughs> <laughs> Should have been a little shorter, I think. Right. Yeah. Well it happens. It's a nice day. Just ride around, uh, ride around Manhattan, and don't get hit by a car. That's 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 how that works. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought it was really cool. Just um, you know, I always try to like do this thing where I actually connect to the people I'm talking to and and stuff. So um, I often I, I've brought up the fact that my I'm in a Navy family all the time, and um, you know, I was in the Navy. Both my parents. My uh, my great granddad was a was a corpsman in the Pacific during World War II. So I mean, he was working on a hospital ship, patching up Marines and that kind of stuff. Mm. So I was really uh, 
excited to hear that you also have a have a some sort of navy heritage. Yep. Yeah, my uh, great grandfather was the last person um, in my family to serve, but it, pretty much before that, everybody's in the military. Um, yeah, he was in the navy. Um, he's a big deep sea diver, submarine commander, and then I uh, also did some reconnaissance, which I don't believe we have access to that information <laughs> even now. Um, but yeah, he was fluent in German, and um, you know, unfortunately, my dad was never able to meet him because he, he passed right after the war <coughs> ended, uh, probably because you know the pressure changes kind of you know they weaken your they weaken your your organs. Yeah. Pretty, pretty severely. So <laughs> those submarines in the World War II weren't as uh, quite as developed and nice as the ones we have now. <laughs> yeah, not not too kind. But, um, and that, that those fumes will will get to you eventually too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he was kind of a he was a, he was a pretty tough tough guy. It's actually a really cool picture of him and his crew. They're sitting. Um, or was it top side? Right. <laughs> yep. um, and they're they're sitting on the the deck. And he somehow is just kind of above where everybody else is. And there's sort of like this, uh, sort of like this vibe you can see where everybody's hanging out, but it's like, yeah, we're going to sort of let him sit there and <laughs> that's his spot. <laughs> like we're, we're not going to mess with that. Not a, not a big guy, but you can sort of tell like, don't, uh, don't, don't mess with him. <laughs> that's, but, yeah. I, sometimes when I'm walking around, the city i wish i had that same sort of vibe and i don't want people to mess with me but it turns into me just looking angry all the time and i've had several people talk to me in the past couple months where they were like oh yeah you're you're actually decently nice why do you just look angry all the time i didn't yeah, realize like the, that i'm sorry <laughs> i'm sorry that i'm just trying to kill people with my eyes unintentionally whatever <laughs> yeah i we could i could you know, like I, I mentioned to you earlier, like my dad was rode and worked on subs for seven years. And if I'm not careful, I could probably talk about that all day. So uh, yeah. let's let's not do that. Um, oh, yeah. As really. much as I might like to. Uh, <laughs> uh, welcome, music to stuff here. welcome to uh, uh, old timey submarines with Dan Dunford and Trevor New. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you are a violist. Yep play that play that viola um and you're what is it you're just you're a freelancer you you freelance you teach all this stuff here in the city yeah i um have been doing a fair amount of freelancing uh, i've been teaching done a lot of teaching actually since i since i got to the city um i've been really fortunate because i didn't i didn't go to school here but i knew a lot of people um, once I, once I got here and I met a, a lot more, um, yeah, I, I worked, I worked in New Jersey, uh, for a while, Brooklyn, Long Island, quite a bit, uh, Queens as well, pretty much everywhere except Manhattan. And I currently work in Brooklyn mm -hmm. I do a lot of private teaching and actually work at the Waldorf school doing uh, private lessons too. <sighs> But uh, yeah, I've been I've been doing that for a little while, and over over time, sort of developed my own uh, you know methods for teaching as, as well as just kind of passing on like a lot of really uh, amazing things that I learned from all my teachers uh, as I was you know going through my education. Mm -hmm. And even with even with it's still hard even here it's still hard to find a good teacher, you know, if you're not if you can't afford to to send your kid to like a, one of the preparatory schools or right. something. You know? Yeah, it's pretty expensive. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I definitely, I mean, my, my rate's not the, the cheapest either. Um, it's flexible, but, but it's still less than sending your kid to right. Manus, uh, Manus prep or Juilliard pre-college, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Significantly, I'd say. Um, yeah, that's a, it's a tough problem. Um, no, there's different, uh, one of the programs, the harmony program, uh, that teaches music in public schools is really great because they pull from, you know, uh, players and uh, teachers who are already working in the city who are interested in, you know, getting paid a small fee, but um, also sort of, you know, giving back to a community that they live in and mm -hmm. um, give them a chance to also interact. Uh, 
yeah, it's kind of a it's kind of a challenging problem with getting everybody getting the opportunity to maybe play a string instrument or they they also do brass and woodwinds as well. Um, it's expensive and a lot of times it's a bit of a luxury, especially you know with the way the instruments are made. I mean, you have to get you know your case and. For string players, you got the instrument and the bow, your rosin, you have to take care of it. And then you have to go and learn how to do it and then practice consistently. Mm -hmm. So there's, you know, there's a lot of variables that you have to take care of um, in order to have a a fulfilling experience. Um, But it's it's cool that a lot of, particularly in New York, I mean, across the world, really, but um, over the past decade or so that a lot more of these um, programs have been popping up to provide education for underprivileged children and and being able to provide them with with stuff like that there's actually one that called play nyc that Hmm. is based out of a church that's just like three three doors down from here and um i didn't even know it was there until one day i was walking by and the door opened and i heard some really terrible trombone playing coming out and i was like yeah, what is loud. this so i just walked in and was like what's going on here and and went upstairs and met one of the guys who's uh who helps run it and i was just oh well i i'm a working trombone player and i live three doors away uh you should uh I, i'm more than happy to volunteer i mean <laughs> yeah, it's a good situation yeah, yeah i mean plus without a master's degree that does you know i d- i didn't i don't need a master's degree to do my playing but in a teaching setting, it's a lot of times, you know, you either you have to have prior experience, a lot of prior experience or a master's degree and some prior experience. And right. I don't really have either one. So I have to get the experience somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's a great, um, that's a lot of what my, I guess my, uh, teaching when I was starting out, I was, what was I doing? I was doing quite a bit of work with uh, group lessons, kind of giving, yeah, that's right. I was the, the intro person. So <laughs> there would be maybe like a three or four week uh, sort of seminar where you get to try out the instruments and it was usually uh, younger kids and you know their parents would, would get to watch all the lessons. Um, as somebody who hadn't worked in a group setting quite as consistently, and it was being, you know, you're being watched by parents and your boss, and then you have kids that are not too sure about what they want to do. It was really good training. <laughs> I'll be be honest. It was uh, it was pretty tough, um, but you know, as with many things, um, I'd say teaching in particular it was it was pretty rewarding because then some of those some of the students went on and you know joined the school, and um, I got to work with them more. So mm-hmm. it's a yeah, it's you know, teaching, I think day to day is very, you know, very difficult sometimes, but then you have these really, really nice moments where things just sort of click for your student. And then it's, you know, they're, you've passed on some, <laughs> some great stuff. I mean, it's hard. And to, that's enough to hold you, uh, keep you going for the next, you know, few right. months at least. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's great energy. So we'll come back to the, you know, the music education stuff but uh let's just you know put a pin in it and we'll kind of like Mm -hmm. talk about you as a person and um and work our way back uh so what uh what where are you from what kind of uh like musical culture did you did you come from well my um both my parents are educators uh but they've always been into music uh very consistently i mean my my dad plays guitar uh my mom played piano a little bit growing up you know, I kind of I grew up listening to a lot of uh, you know sixties and seventies, like I guess you'd like rock, like uh, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton. That was like those two guys were big for my dad. Um, and then my mom is definitely like Peter Gabriel and Whitney Houston, Michael mm-hmm. Jackson. Um, so it was you know there's a lot of there's like a lot of good <laughs> yeah there's a lot of a lot of good energy kind of going on in the house mixing it up and uh so i you know i tried to play guitar i mean the first song i tried to play as a kid it was on a full-size guitar so it may not have sounded great um it was tiny but uh house of the rising sun i could i could sort of get those chords mm-hmm. and uh yeah so i went on i was uh, living in new jersey at that time that's where i was born and I moved to Oregon when I was eight. 
uh, my parents did a lot of research, you know, trying to figure out good schools. And uh, they were specifically looking at music programs um, and they found the, you know, the district that we ended up living in in Salem, Oregon, uh, found that it had almost like a world class, uh, you know, it was a really, really amazing situation set up. My teacher uh, was a really major player. Uh, when he was coming up and decided to teach instead. He just, um, something that happens a lot of times, he got really disenchanted with the work he was doing and started teaching more and more and figured out that that's what he wanted to do. Um, so he built, helped build this really amazing program, um, which I then got into when I was in fourth grade. Mm -hmm. uh, the way might be curious is how I picked the viola because you know maybe That's, I mean you actually picked it you didn't start on violin right yeah I, I started on viola first day I actually wanted to switch a little bit later because I didn't <laughs> like the parts that much but figured that out that ironed itself out um yeah I was supposed to go to this evening of you know like the mu the musical petting zoo Kind of thing, which is what they do so the institution of the musical petting zoo <laughs> right and I brought um I brought like the permission slip and information home for my parents and I sent them to go to the petting zoo and stayed home, <laughs> <laughs> which they were really mad about. Cause it, I like, I told them like, Oh yeah, no, I don't need to go to this. Like I, you know, it was being a, being kind of a pain. Uh, so I sent my representatives or whatever and sent your agent. <laughs> yeah. It was really stupid. I mean, I did, a, I was a little, a little spacey, um, back then. But so I still had to choose an instrument. So I was in school and the orchestra teacher that I then worked with later, uh, he actually came to the school in a purple VW Bug. It was very shiny. He, he loved that car. I think it still works. But he picked me up, signed me out of school, which you could not do now. I don't mm -hmm. know how he did it then, but he signed me out of school, took me to the high school, and I got to walk around the orchestra. Mm -hmm. And they played... You know, they played these uh, movie themes. Mm -hmm. So they played like Forrest Gump, Schindler's List, Homeward Bound. Which I don't know if any, everybody's as familiar oh, with. Oh, I'm very familiar yeah, with it. <laughs> that, I mean, that was like, that was, that, that was what I watched. <laughs> like I, I love that, that theme too. Yeah. It's like, it's all very, it's very like warm, uh, a lot of warm and then, all, you know, also familiar music. And mm -hmm. he let all of, you know, all the instruments sort of take a, a solo and everybody quiet down so I could hear. And there was just, I don't know, there was something about the viola. Um, I could hear, I just remembered how it sounded. And I thought, you know what, maybe I'll pick that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of sticking with me. Um, and that, oddly, too, that was the one that I knew of. Yeah. That's my, weird. My dad was talking to me. He's like, yeah, you know, there's the viola, too. It's like, it's pretty cool. I was like, oh, <laughs> I guess that's the one that I know now. So, <laughs> like, so. Um, as a, with children starting on viola, I don't know. Um, I'm assuming that with, when when kids start on their instruments, um, like even if even if there's not a certain amount of kids that pick viola, they force some of them to play viola. Correct. Right. right. So, um, but there are unique challenges that come with playing viola. Um, I mean, I'm assuming there's there's miniature versions of every string instrument, but right. are there there's still challenges for children learning that instrument in particular? Yeah, there's. I think the thing that I noticed immediately was everybody else's instrument sounded pretty good, and then my top three my top three strings sounded pretty good, but the C string is awful on a small viola. Like, <laughs> there's just no sound. It's too low. Like so, I thought you know this this is bad. You know? So maybe <laughs> <laughs> like, I think I, I signed up for this and it looks like it's going to happen for a year. Year's a really long time. And, um, maybe I can switch. And I talked to my teacher and he's like, no, I think, I think you should stick with it. Um, it'll get, you know, you'll get a bigger instrument. It'll sound better. I was like, are you sure? And he's <laughs> like, yes, let's, <laughs> let's do that. I'll see you later. Like, he's, yeah, he, he, he was he was very supportive of uh, my my viola playing. Um, so did did your relationship with him kind of like 
provide that initial impetus to where you are now with your passion for music education or did that come later? Yeah, it was kind of a kind of an all in one thing. I mean, my so my introduction since he has, you know, he had a really extensive experience um in the classical world, you know, he had a lot of stories, he had a lot of historical things, a lot of experiences that he had and um I think what I got initially got out of it was the idea of, you know, exploration and then also of community is one of his main tenets was being able to interact with everybody. The idea is that everybody is just fully connected to each other and communicating and he doesn't have to do anything when he's conducting us. That was a, a really big thing. And with regards to exploration, our first, you know, one of our first talks about composers was actually about Bach. He's like, yeah, I know Bach's my favorite and <laughs> all this stuff. And I know all about Bach. You don't need to, you yeah, know, come on, come right. on. <laughs> and I kept, um, you know, I, I, was, I had asked a lot of questions as a kid, so I was doing that. It's kind of braiding him and stuff. But eventually I asked, like, what if, you know, what if you made music up? Like, what if you just out of, can't you just play whatever you want? He's like, well, yeah, Bach did that. And, you know, one of my my immediately immediate question was, well, what if you, everybody made everything up all the time and it was just <laughs> perfect? Like, it's just like a real kind of childish way of putting it. But um, he's like, well, you know, there are people that do that, too. It doesn't always sound good. Sometimes it's interesting. Um, I think we're going to start class now. <laughs> like that kind of a thing. But um, that sort of stuck in my head uh, a little bit about just making it all up because it seemed really challenging. But. I guess the idea of if you're completely hooked up with everybody and communicating, can't you just, you know, imbibe like your, your whole, your thoughts and all this stuff. Like it was a very, you know, I was, I was thinking very, uh, I guess it's kind of like an existential, yeah. uh, kind of, kind of question. Like how old were you at this point? Oh, this was, this was in fourth. I was nine. Yeah. It was just like, it was in class. Uh, I don't know. It's very, <laughs> imagination land was basically where I lived <laughs> at that point. Um, but yeah, that was a big, uh, you know, that was something that I think slowly developed as I was playing is thinking about um, different perspectives and music. And part of why I think I incorporated improv into the playing that I do now, um, you know, I like the, like the pre-composed and improv sort of together kind of allowing you to have like a good guide, but still have, you know, that energy. Cause there's always a certain, you know, every performance is different and all, you know, your energy is different every time you play. Um, but you know, it's good if you can make something sound good if you're able to right. read, read the notes. So that, that idea was, uh, sort of implanted really early. So let's, Let's move, move, let's bump it up a little bit, um, like to where you kind of started to, I mean, everyone pretty much, I was just talking with someone about the late. everyone kind of starts on the same path, um, and then takes different trajectories after a certain point. Right. Um, I think that's a fair to say, um, so when, what point in your like musical education development, I mean, in, you know, you, you had these interests already or were asking these questions already, which seems pretty rare for a nine-year-old, um, a nine-year-old musician, I guess. Um, but at what point did you like start on your different trajectory? Was it, was it in high school when you started to get more serious or was it like further beyond that? It was, um, for me, it was definitely in high school, uh, when I started getting ready, you know, you want, you'd start thinking about going to college and I took the PSATs. Um, I think that happens was, I think I took them my sophomore year. It was like a practice. I think you can do that. Um, maybe misremembering, but I think that's right. Uh, and my, my whole, I started really thinking about, you know, what do I do after high school? Like what, you know, what's, what's going to happen here? I guess I have to start make, making money and <laughs> live someplace else and do that whole thing. And what am I, you know, what am I good at? And I always felt like I was good at whatever I put my mind to. Uh, but I'm a little 
feel like sometimes maybe a little difficult if there's too much of a, a form or I don't know, a, a little particular <laughs> uh, about things. So like I, I felt like I was pretty good at math, but couldn't stand being in the classroom. You know, it's just, I'm not doing my homework. Like, they're like a science. Great. I don't want to read about this right now. You know, so it was, mm-hmm. I think what, you know, ended up happening, I went to a, a camp, um, it's called Meadow Mount. You could pretty much call it a summer school for musicians. And it's um, one of the, the most popular and, and best music summer schools, if you will, for young string players. Yeah, it's a pretty tough, it's a really tough program. Uh, seven weeks, uh, five hours a day, every day. If you're under 18, <coughs> um, it's monitored practice. And I think it's every day, it's up Sundays, uh, performances every every other day. Then you have quartet. Um, if you're a violist, you're in two groups. So oh. it's more time. You have a lot more rehearsal time and you have two coaches or one coach with two groups. Um, yeah, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, it was a really intense situation and time just slows down to nothing. And you get to really see, you know, is this something that I really like doing because I'm doing it all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'm really not not doing much much else and for me it was i mean it was in it was enjoyable the whole time uh there were definitely of course there were days where i was like this i'm really bored right now i need (laughs) to watch tv or something i was a big tv watcher like that (laughs) like watched a lot but um yeah it was something where it's like i gotta come back here this is this really sort of magical place where everybody goes to the room and they practice and they just go yeah like they go as hard as possible like they're they're doing everything they can to figure out you know how to play you know this you know whatever amazing piece they're playing or even stuff that they don't like i mean it was i want to learn how to do this better and that was something that you know i always noticed i had that in me and i played a lot of sports and i was you know really intense and you're get all like macho and everybody's like yelling or whatever but um I didn't find that in music the same way until I went there and realized you know there are there here's a really large group of people a lot of them really motivated to make something awesome happen and that was a little bit more of a new experience for you yeah yeah I hadn't um I'd taken lessons I started taking lessons in eighth grade um but I did mostly ensemble playing and while it was involved and in t- intense in its own way it wasn't this per like a such a personal examination of what I was able to do because when I got there you know I have all this experience playing in you know my high school orchestra mm-hmm. you know everything like that is a string called the camarada um but when you're by yourself it's like you have to really look sort of I guess look inwards for um for something a little bit different. It's like, what, what can I do and really push yourself? So that was, and you have to find what it is that pushes you to keep on a a forward path. And sometimes you don't find it, (laughs) Um, right? but a moment like that can be really scary because what if you don't find it? I like doing this, but, and it's kind of what I'm planning to do, but if that's not there, then (laughs) <laughs> you kind of have to stop floating along and figure out what it is right. that you do want to do, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. There was a definite thing like it, you know, I found, I found it was something that I wanted to do and I kind of felt like, I like I have to do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like this yeah. is, this is great. I didn't, I didn't think that until I went there and you know, it's still, you know, it's a place that you know, friends that I see around the city, we talk about occasionally different stories and, um, yeah, I got, a, I got a lot out of it. Okay. So, obviously, big part of of your growing, your musical, it was a big part of your growth as a musician was was this specific instance. And um, when you when you moved on past that and started uh, started school, bachelor's, master's beyond um 
did you find you were able to continue with that? I mean, obviously you have, there's a lot of things when you're in, when you're in school, when right. you're in college, at least, um, a lot of, a lot of distractions. Of course, everyone falls prey yes. to those at, yeah. at different <laughs> points. I mean, everyone has stories upon stories of like how they, they got distracted and should have been in the practice room and, oh, what if I had, but all of that aside, <laughs> um, you know, was it, were you expecting it to be similar and it wasn't, or was it, you know, the, that same musical experience? Was it a jarring shift from what you were hoping for? That's a good question. Um, yeah, I would say, I mean, how did you, how did you continue your, your path through, through that with, you know, what kind of the challenges and the differences? Right. Yeah. It, um, it's one of the things that was, kind of interesting because we were a very closely knit group you know when I was in high school uh we had like some like sort of core tenants so I I always wanted to go to find that sort of same feeling like within that group then going on to going to a totally different environment that was you know really intense and very much about developing your own skills um you know it was a different experience and I had actually did have a little trouble bridging that gap um, at first. So when I went to college, you know, my whole motivation, I felt like I, I need to catch up to where everybody is technically. Um, so I practiced, I mean, I was practicing probably six, eight hours a day sometimes, um, just like in two hour chunks between classes, getting up early and really pushing myself. And I think one of those things, you know, because I, I definitely felt a little bit, uh, it's sort of a confusing time because there isn't a, there isn't like a base for you to go to. And that, you know, that, that goes with anything when you're first, you know, first year in school, you know, you leave home, you have to start managing your schedule, mm -hmm. homework. And I tried to take on as much as I could, uh, end up getting quite a few injuries actually, uh, at a few bouts of tendonitis. Um, one was particularly bad where, I was in, I was playing really well, but uh, <laughs> like just throwing that out there. Um, like I think I, I finished playing La Boheme, uh, the college orchestra, and it's a Portland State University. And you know I was playing in everything, and then I went to the doctor, and because I was just I was I was in a lot of pain, um, honestly. And it was a OHU OHSU Research Hospital, but. Uh, I had to put my arms probably up to the elbow. They were in braces. Like they made these molds for me. Um, I had to, you know, I was taking crazy amounts of ibuprofen. Mm -hmm. So like, I think we're going to stick with this, but we'll, we're not up to like cortisone yet. We yeah. want to, we want to avoid that, but we could, <coughs> um, got to see if, you know, what you're playing longevity is going to be like after you heal. Um, so it was eight weeks of that. I did massage therapy, ultrasound therapy. Um, I couldn't, so I, like I couldn't use my computer so, or play during that time. A lot of people, string players and woodwind players and pianists in particular, almost everyone deals with some form of tendonitis at some point in right. their lives. It's, it's just something that happens. You're using your hands so much and so right. repetitively without proper rest a lot of times. Um, but this this kind of situation that you're talking about, little more drastic than than probably. Right. I can only think of one one other person who had a uh, that I know that had a similar or like a similar a similarly uh, difficult experience with tendonitis. So what was when you were going through this? Um, I'm sure you like inside you're just freaking out because this is this is like you this is what you love. You love viola. You love playing playing you 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 know you love music what was it what was your mental state like during this time during that time uh not not great because <laughs> i mean it was the sort of like not only could i not play but i couldn't go running i can't you know i can't go i used to swim a lot and i go swimming i can't really hang out the same way with people because i literally i have to keep my arms still <laughs> like i have to kind of <laughs> like keep them so in some some ways, you know, keeping them a little bit, uh, not super elevated, but like a little bit more elevated. Um, 
had like these special bandages that it was like the experimental whatever <laughs> stuff that like pushed medication into my skin uh it's anti-inflammatory um and i think yeah it was i think being it felt like i was being held hostage in my apartment like i just had to i had to sit a lot and sit still which i'm i'm not really you know i'm not a I'm a, I'm a, I have a certain amount of energy all the time. Like I'm pretty relaxed, but I, you know, I like to move. It's um, a lot of, a lot of TV watching. Yeah. I guess like anybody, <laughs> nobody likes to sit for days on end inside, but, um, yeah, it was, I think part, you know, part of the reason I think that happened is I was, I felt this need to, you know, fill you know, your metaphorical fill some shoes or whatever. It's like, I, I felt like I had to be the best at everything. So I had to be, you know, the best in opera, like in our opera program, I had to be the orchestra, I had to practice so I could be, um, so I could catch up or maybe, um, pass by the people that I had seen over the summer because, you know, I wasn't at that point, I wasn't interacting with the same kind of players, uh, that like in terms of, uh, that, that kind of intensity the people who were trying to be yeah i mean i'm sure portland state is a really good school but the the level across the board you know at many schools of that similar sizes the, you know the level across the board isn't going to be quite as high so it's not you're not running up against people that you can measure yourself against quite as much right yeah, so was... what did you do to I, I mean i can't imagine well i guess i can't imagine because i have gone through periods where i didn't play but those were my choice you know, as opposed to having it taken out of your hands. Um, what did you do to get yourself through? I mean, yeah, it was kind of a, it was, it's a bit of a tough process because the, the first thing you have to do once you heal is to figure out how to prevent that from happening again. Um, and my, my teacher is actually really good, uh, really good about encouraging me to find ways of doing that and working with me to find ways. I mean, there are immediately quite a few things I could do is just practice a little bit less, <laughs> practice a little smarter, you know, maybe not just running through certain things or really focusing on what I'm doing with my mind. Because I think, what was it? I think it's Galamian said this. If you can't learn how to play practicing three hours a day, like you can practice more than that. But if you can't learn practicing three hours a day, it's like not your thing. But <laughs> I think he, I think partly he says that because, you know, there's, there is a limit to what you can do in a day. And there are other ways of uh, learning how to play better than just, you know, just grinding your, your joints. I mean, it really is what I was doing was just almost like kamikaze style play as much as possible until everything shuts down. Um, so, I mean, I worked a lot with, uh, figuring out how to play more relaxed, worked on my, my posture. Um, an amazing experience that I had is actually when I went, I went back to Meadow Mount, um, three more times after my first experience and I had a different teacher the last year. Um, and he was a violin and viola teacher and he taught my, my, the teacher that I had from elementary to high school, mm -hmm. he taught that orchestra teacher and our first lesson, he sat me down and he was like, okay, so if you don't change a lot of how you're approaching the instrument, you're, you're not going to play much longer than maybe 10 years if you're lucky. Like you are, <laughs> you are do you're doing some you're, you're doing some things here. Like <laughs> we're, we're going to fix this now. And you know, he's like, all right, put up your instrument. And immediately it's like, all right, your back is complete. Like everything was tight. Mm -hmm. I was, I was, my level of tension, I guess, was just off the charts. Uh, so we started looking at instead of using your strength to get the sound out of the instrument, because you're, you're going to get nowhere near your, pressing as hard as you can mm -hmm. in order to get the sound out. It's like, it doesn't make any sense. Use, you sort of use the, the sound. Um, how did he say this? Man, it's a while ago. <laughs> you use, 
basically use what's coming out to determine what you need to do instead of like, I need to feel like I'm punching through a wall. Like, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a, again, like a sports thing, um, a sports sense where I just, I need to feel like I'm worn out after I do this. Like I need to just, you know, otherwise I'm not doing my best. Um, and you know, it's like, you're like letting people, like you feel like you're letting people down, you know, think those things. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of pressure when you're learning how to play. Uh, and I think if, if I could go back, like I would just tell myself, like, yes, practice, be intense, but you know, listen to your body. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that whole no pain, no gain thing. Yeah. Like that <laughs> doesn't work for like, it doesn't work for viola. <laughs> so I remember like, there was a, yeah. um, an article or a, a column that I read by, uh, Doug Yo, who used to be the bass drummer in the Boston symphony. Uh, he was there for many years. He wrote a column and uh, I was talking about the audition process, which mm -hmm. whatever. But uh, one of the things he said is if you're in pain, stop immediately because the guy that says no pain, no gain missed the audition because he's in the hospital. You know, right. <laughs> it's 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 we're 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 told that we have to meet a certain standard um, in a school setting, really in just in any kind of musical setting, you have to hit a certain standard and you have to figure out for yourself how to approach it because, you know, killing yourself isn't the way to do it. <laughs> right. Uh, do you still have the occasional issue with tendonitis or have you largely put that to rest? I mean, because, because the first time you get it, it will make it easier to get it another time. Right. And the time after that, I actually had a few more, what is it? I had it two or three more times maybe something like that but they were you know they were much less severe um one i got when i was doing uh the concerto competition at uh michigan that's where uh, you did your masters yeah yeah i was um what is it? i advanced so i was going to the going to the finals and there was christmas break in between and i tried to use that time to rest up because going leading up to the to the actual, um, you know, to the previous round, like I was, I felt like I was almost completely shot mm -hmm. and like I just couldn't play over break. And so, you know, in the final round, you know, I put, put my best foot forward, you know, the, I did, did what I could, uh, but not improving over break was kind of a, kind of a tough deal. Like I just yeah. couldn't play. So <laughs> I, I still did a good job. Um, I was playing the Bartok, yeah, Bartok viola concerto, and I got beat by a pianist also playing a Bartok concerto, who was also accompanying me. <laughs> like, it's a weird later, emotional place to put like, yourself. Oh, in. good job! Uh, like this, this feel, yeah. <laughs> like but, whether you win or lose, you're kind of like in a weird position. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, I mean, I was happy for him. He played really well, but um, yeah, I don't know. There's, I mean, that whole experience was was really intense especially when you're out in front of everybody right. it really is like you do a good job everybody really likes you and then if you don't win you you feel like you wasted the whole yeah, thing yeah you you are it yeah it, your, your appreciation goes away yeah a little, <laughs> little bit it really um, does so when uh, when did you move to new york i moved was it uh 2010 in uh, August, yeah, August twenty sixth. No, oh, so yeah. you're celebrating your five year anniversary of New Yorkiness. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It was um, it was the hottest week on record when I moved, and yeah, at that point in time, it's like watching The Daily Show. That's where yeah. I got that from. But oh yeah, um, which is gone now. It's just so <coughs> weird. But uh, yeah, I got into my apartment. Uh, freshly painted I didn't they lost my suitcase for a while and I had my sleeping bag and all that stuff in there so <laughs> I got into the place and I had to sleep on my backpack no that um, sounds great this is probably gonna gross you out a little bit and anybody listening but uh sleeping on the floor and you know it was painted like a day or two ago not like really fresh paint it was otherwise it would have passed out or something but um they had the door open for ventilation mm -hmm. for a while. So naturally some things got in 
So I was asleep and I, you know, oh, I wasn't boy. really thinking about <laughs> bugs or anything. And there, there are a lot of, a lot of like centipedes, millipedes, all that stuff that were just hanging out on me. And I, I don't know, there was a huge block party going on. I had a horrible time getting to sleep. I'm like on this, you know, tile floor. It's really hard. And as soon as that happened, I was like, I, this, this is bad. Like, I don't know if that make a mistake. Like, oh, <laughs> welcome like, to New York. Kid. Yeah. I, I freaked out. I, I don't like. I mean, I don't well, like bugs who, crawling on me. Yeah, everybody. Who, who, I feel like there are not that many people who would be cool with that. Yeah, it's always somebody, but yeah, not, not me. <laughs> <laughs> so how long did it take you to kind of, I mean, a lot of people, they go to school in New York and that's how they build the relationships that eventually right. serve them in their professional career. What was it like coming in? Did you come in right after you finished at Michigan or? Yeah, I did. Um, like, how did you kind of work your way into um now being a, a success a successful freelancer and, and teacher um it was definitely definitely a bit of a process um <laughs> like I, oh, you mean it doesn't happen in six months yeah I, it's it's uh it was way there was so much more going on than i really anticipated but i don't regret anything i mean it was everything everything that you you do you know i feel like you're you know working from like working whatever job for a while or whatever your process is to get to the next thing. Like, I mean, this is an obvious statement, but it really prepares you for whatever's coming next. Like I, I had my first real job. Like when I came here, like I got mm -hmm. a job at borders. I was working part-time. I was the info guy. <laughs> nice. Um, it was very, you know, friendly, knowledgeable dude. Um, I think I recommended a few books roots. I'm only saying it's like, it's a good book. It's not, a, it's a heavy read. The writing, writing is okay, but the story is really good. Um, yeah, you get into little debates with people, but um, yeah. So I worked at worked at Borders, uh, and I started playing with the Chelsea Symphony actually, um, because my a friend from University of Michigan, uh, Yaniv Segal, he uh, is a conductor, but he started that orchestra um, with you know a few other people. He's a founding one of the founders, you know, he's recommending, he's like, Hey, check out Chelsea. And, you know, I emailed Julia Koo, um, who doesn't live in New York anymore, but she, you know, she's great. Um, emailed her, she was contracting and I immediately got on a gig for, I think it was a fashion mm. Mercedes fashion, yeah, something or other. Those. Yeah. So it was really, I was like, Oh my God, New York. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm with all these famous people. Like I Killing saw it. one of the, the real housewives in New York, I think. Was there a, a show <laughs> like going on? Yeah, I think it was one of her shows. I was like, oh, this is really cool. Like, I'm cool now. Like, I'm going to see, yeah, like, show, the whole, like, showbiz sort of. I, I was really, really amazed at, mm -hmm. you know, getting to see. I'd never seen, like, a model show, yeah. like, yeah. people people doing, like, runway modeling. Um, oh, and because you moved here in August, like, New York Fashion Week is is in September. So it's like right away. Yeah. Yeah. So it was, um, I think, yeah, it must've been, mm -hmm. yeah, it was fashion week. That's yeah. right. So like, yeah. Cause that's, that's mid September. So like, that's like a three week time span. That's nice. <laughs> right. Yeah. So it was really quick. Um, yeah. When I started, uh, playing with the orchestra, kind of a, a funny thing happened, you know, I got to rehearsal and I, you know, I was going to be sitting in the back and something happened where the, usual principal player couldn't make it and i ended up just the first rehearsal playing out the series mm -hmm. and that was a really good so i was brand new and it's like all right i get to kind of show a little bit more about what i was doing i can't remember what we were playing but uh, I, I was very exposed because not everybody was there there was something that happened like some train right kind of thing like, well like i mean usually plus, happens i mean of course now you still play in the chelsea symphony I also play in the Chelsea Symphony, and then the way the rehearsals work is you don't have to be at every single one, so there's right. that, and then, you know, <laughs> so sometimes that first rehearsal is a little, not rough, just spare, because there's people who couldn't make make it to the rehearsal. Right. Yeah, so it was a good, uh, it's like, I guess you'd say a like good uh, advertising or whatever. Um, yeah, Chelsea Symphony, we both love you, so. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah. <laughs> cool but, um, that one's for you, Emily. 
it was pretty <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty um it was really really a nice thing because it was a community of people that like I had I had like some I had people now mm -hmm. <laughs> like they I was immediately you know very friendly um group and I got to I made a lot of friends there some really close friends from the orchestra and um we did you know it supported helped support me uh financially because we ended up doing these we did the a gig with the Irish tenors for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, got on different like contracted gigs, like some some good like union uh, level pay stuff too. So I, my income, I which I needed. Right. <laughs> like I really, I really needed what you know what we did the next few months to kind of carry me into January. And um, yeah, that was so. And of course, that gave you the opportunity to kind of meet people and get your name out right. there, and 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 you know well lucking into being playing principal on your very first time with them i mean that that and being prepared for that that shows you know that that looks good to other people right. of course um before we keep going i was just a quick question um or a quick uh detour um chelsea symphony is is a group that doesn't pay its musicians um right so but you've been playing with them for five years and yeah, I a guess lot of, that's true. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's bad. Yeah. So, um, as a freelancer, both of us, we, you know, you always are getting called and asked to play for different things and some of them pay, some of them don't. Um, a lot of people will say no free gigs. I'm not quite in that group because sometimes you can do a lot of great stuff or meet really cool people on free gigs. If it's, you know, a good, a good uh, situation or a good um, environment. Yeah, environment. Yeah, I was, I was thinking <laughs> so, of that too. <laughs> um, but uh, that's a thing that we have to contend with as working musicians is whether to take free gigs or not. So why have you stuck with Chelsea um, for the past five years? Of course, you know, they do, they do supply musicians to various things that do pay. But yeah. you're still, it's, and now they're expanding their concert series a little bit this season, and it's, you right. know, it's more concerts. And um, so that's what, six or seven concert series a year, and that, that doesn't pay. So why would you stick with a group like that? Well, it's kind of a, it's an interesting, that's a really interesting question. Um, I think something, you know, for me, first, you know, there's, I'm playing with friends. Um, and that's hard to beat. They're pretty flexible with scheduling, mm -hmm. um, which is another another part. I mean, flexible to a, a certain point, you know, within reason, of course. Um, and you know, one of their, you know, one of their uh, big things that they do is they allow people to play uh, like a solo piece of some kind with the orchestra. I've actually done that twice, and it's been uh, really invaluable to my own playing. Um, as an experience because there's I mean once you're out by yourself and <laughs> everybody's <laughs> depending on you it, and it's a little different than doing just, a concerto competition at school <laughs> right I mean it's you know it's a lot more pressure and um, yeah it the the fact that you're they're sort of giving people the opportunity to function in a lot of different roles I think was really valuable for me um, I mean, I was, you know, I, I played principal quite a bit, um, but then, you know, also getting, uh, playing on different paid gigs as well. Uh, they're unique. Each of the gigs is usually very unique in itself. So there's a, there's a value that you get outside of, um, outside of just, you know, whatever playing you do, there's, there's different experiences you get. Um, and I, you know, I mean, there, there, there's some, some times that you get to support other people who are playing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think it's, I think what, what, what's happening is you're, you're overall, you're kind of supporting a lot of the tenants that are an original, maybe a, a primary reason you got into music in the first place. Yeah. So you're, you're getting to play you know, some traditional things, you're getting to play some new things, you're helping new and maybe older players or whatever get to, um, get to have a completely new kind of orchestra experience. Um, I mean, my, you know, the, what, what can happen in you know, other regional orchestras, some are, some are great. Uh, but 
my one of my experience my experience with orchestra has really uh, changed as I've gotten closer to New York, closer to like you know professional atmosphere, and it is it's difficult to find a place where you're not just knocking it out, mm-hmm. and the goal isn't to just be like okay we got all the notes right, like there really is a uh, there's a certain amount of integrity that goes into the program planning. I feel like for the orchestra and then who, you know, gets to play, Mm -hmm. um, you know, going out on gigs as well. I mean, that, that stuff's really tough. Um, and it's, I'd say it's really difficult to have like a really formal policy on that because you have to, you know, you have to figure out what you want to do. Like I, yeah, uh, but it's something that everyone has to think about. So like, that's kind of why I really wanted to get into that. Um, yeah, but that's, that's a lot of, uh, free publicity oh for, yeah right <laughs> like yeah this right. isn't the chelsea symphony podcast i just really like them trevor obviously likes them so hey let's do it um <laughs> yeah so moving you know moving forward over the past five years um you've had different opportunities open up and you've, you've had the chance to play with a lot of you know, cool things you know i I know a good number of people who, who know you and have played with you in different different settings. So you're you're around. Um, so what you know aside from from all the performing and and stuff, you're um, we've already talked a bit about uh, music education and um, right. you know you have right now you're working you have this project this ongoing project of um, these kind of semi-instructional well i mean they are instructional but they're also you know good and musical and these series of youtube videos where you kind of uh in a in a teaching setting so can you just you know talk talk through that a little bit yeah um you know one of the things that was really frustrating for me when i was learning how to play um just kind of overall going you know elementary to you know uh, grad school was figuring out how to be how to be a really good player, but at the same time play music written for viola. I don't know how, I don't know how else to put it. <laughs> like, it, like, cause it really, <laughs> because I gotta, I gotta be like, to be honest, when you're playing, if you sit down and play what, a, like any sort of famous symphony, um, it just, this is not true of all of them, but um, in a lot of cases, you're playing like it's just oh, it's you're a kind little of really repetitive. To Mozart and Haydn a little bit. Yeah, maybe a little bit. <laughs> De- definitely some Mozart. We played. Oh my god, we played Mozart for a year in high school. This one piece. It was a really hard violin part, so we had to work on it a lot. We were getting ready to go to um, Vienna, which is an international uh, youth orchestra competition there. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, so we had to work on that, kind of put that on the back burner, but work on it uh, periodically through for about a year. And um, yeah, so it was a little, I, I mean, I, Mozart, great, but I have a hard time get, getting on board <laughs> a lot of times. But, um, but it's a real challenge, though, if you're playing viola to develop your technique, because I mean, I always find the music that is written for us in orchestral settings. It's like, it's an afterthought in a lot Mm -hmm. of ways. A lot of, you know, it really shows when there's these strange jumps where it's like, oh, you're just here filling out a chord that other people have been playing. You are as non, (laughs) you know what I'm saying? It's not like, I don't want to say non-essential because you're essential because you got to play that note. That's a, you need an E, it's a C chord. Like, you know, but, um, so that sort of, and that, that, uh, that, in a technical sense also translates into the, um, the atmosphere having to, you know, just the social atmosphere too. It's like, there's the whole, maybe violists like don't play as well or something like that. <laughs> there are people who play viola because they weren't good enough to play violin. Right. Like that kind of thing. Yeah. And there's like, was it viola jokes? Whatever. <laughs> so you're not, I'm not too, too up on those. Although, <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> so this I think is great for anything. Although it's really, I would not use it for viola players. I think I'm better than how this joke is portraying viola players. But it's <laughs> it's rough. Like it's um, how does it go? How do you tell if the stage 
is level. Oh, uh, which side of the mouth the drool comes out of? Yeah, which <laughs> which side is the drool coming out of the violist mouth or something? It's like that's like it's so extreme. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I think I think that was for something else originally. So <laughs> like, we'll keep it there. Yeah, we'll keep it there. Um, wait, what, what, so, what were you asking? Me? <laughs> so, totally forgot. Um, getting in, we're getting towards like uh, playing how we're getting into why you make your videos for like, oh you right know. so yeah why why i want to uh teach and yeah um yeah so those i feel like uh a really good mode to kind of equalize uh, the situation you know i feel like we're in where you go and you play music that's a little bit older and the difficulty level is not equal violas Viola parts being, I feel like at the bottom most of the time, <laughs> if you're not challenged, you're not going to get better. Um, if you if you don't play the melody, you're not going to learn as much about harmony. Mm -hmm. um, you play a violin part, you can figure out what the key changes are. Right. But the viola part, it could be anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, and so a really really straightforward method, I feel, is just through your own somehow tapping into your own uh your own thoughts on music which improvisation is you know a really strong manifestation of that um what what i do in the the videos that i'm posting is i'm you know i'm trying to take pop tunes break them down a little bit break them down to basically a scale and a, your whim so you learn the scale you mess around with you mess around with the scale figuring out where all the notes are so you can understand it globally and then you go through and you play along with you know you play along with the instrumental you know sort of backing track right thing. so you've created these instrumental backing tracks that go along with the video um, right that are a part of the video rather and right. so you can you know whoever can kind of play along with it which is which is cool it's right. you know a lot of instructional videos or you know just are like this is do this, but there's no real component of, Oh, do this with me, you know? Right. And also the selection of the, um, the selection <coughs> of the, the selection of the songs that, uh, I choose has a lot to do with what key they're in and how sometimes how popular they are. And also mm -hmm. if they're good, like I, I'm not going to put up <laughs> something that sucks. Like, well, I, I mean, I got you, you pulled me in because, uh, one of the more recent ones you've done was the, the song from Furious 7, um, oh, right. which... Uh, See You Again? See You Again, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know why. I've seen that movie probably three times already, so I don't know why I couldn't remember that. Yeah, um, pretty awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so like songs like that, that one, that particular song was wildly popular all summer and, you know, had the emo additional emo emotional component you know, drawn from, mm -hmm. from Paul Walker's death in the movie, but, um, or death in life and yeah <laughs> anyway not important um <laughs> so um i found it very interesting that yeah you, you were talking about the improvisation and um like the scale the the introduction of the scale the improvisation and then the playing together you kind of um put everything into one fairly bite-sized module um I mean, none of these videos are particularly long, uh, right. ranging from seven to ten minutes on on average, from what I from what I saw. Um, so I think it's really it's really great to because a lot of people we all have busy schedules. Even kids have busy schedules, right? I mean, yeah, they do. You know, <laughs> they have but the, being stuff, able right. to you know take ten minutes and and at least start down the path of learning this, it's it's really. Um, I was really you know when I watched, I was like, this is this is incredible. I you know, it, it's easy, you know, it makes sense and you can go from there. Right. Yeah. I try to leave, uh, try to leave the door open for everybody to kind of explore a little bit more. Um, and easy is like a big word like that. It's, mm -hmm. it's not even like nobody is like bad, like quote unquote bad at, you know, doing improvisation. You just need time with it, like with anything else. Um, and it doesn't have to, I know I've heard from a lot of classical players and it's like, Oh, I'm not going to do that. It's not my thing. Like, and it's, you know, that's fine. Like whatever. But, uh, it really can only benefit your playing because it's another perspective. 
Um, a weird corollary to that is, <laughs> is uh, I, I like sports. I actually like there's mixed martial arts, UFC. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about in a technical sense, you deal with, you know, how fighters learn, you know, different skills because they're pulling from all different areas. Um, in a lot of ways, they're actually, they get more physically fit and, I think they're was they're measuring punches, something like that, mm -hmm. right? A mixed martial artist hits way harder than a boxer, mm -hmm. like in a, and it's kind of I feel like that can help people in in a personal sense as a musician. Not necessarily that it's going to make you better than somebody else, but you will learn something that will help you in your own playing from improvising and looking at classical music maybe in a different way, like in that light as this more global idea instead of I'm playing this part, the conductor just went pop, like, you know, with the, um, with the baton and that's where I play. Right. And this is forte, mezzo forte piano. Instead of having this, I think this way because I have all these other experiences. Um, and in a place like New York or any city where there's a thriving freelance community, that only helps you. Like, Right. You're not gonna. You're, oh yeah. You're not gonna yeah, be yeah. worse because you know how to do these more things because you didn't only focus in on one thing. You're gonna, you know, it's you know, what happens is you get called for more different things, and that that has several effects. Where you, first of all, you get a good reputation for a guy being a guy who can do everything or many many different things, if not everything. And it also keeps you engaged and because you're not doing the same thing every day. Right. And that's a really quick way to get burnt out um, if you're just doing the same. I mean, some people like it, then yeah. that's fine. Um, personally, and a lot of the people I, I talk to, if they did the same thing every day, they would they would burn out musically pretty quickly. Right. I'm, I mean, do you find that to be the case? I'm definitely one of those. I, <laughs> I, you know, at first it took, a, it took me a little while to get used to how varied things were um, in New York, but it really, um, there's sort of a, a rhythm to it now that I feel like I've gotten into. I mean, I'm playing, I, I play a very wide variety of things. Uh, you know, recently played with Loft Opera, mm -hmm. um, which I've actually been with them since the very first show I played. <laughs> I don't know. It's a little, little badge of badge of honor there, but uh, yeah. And I think Dave, this is kind of an amazing thing. The first show that they did, that they put together for. You know, I was playing. Um, it wasn't sold out, and then I want to say almost every show has been sold out since then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just out the last performance right. they did, and it, it's they. It's not, and the thing is, it's not particularly easy to get to either. Right. It's not like something that's just off one of the train stations in Manhattan. It's kind of far out in Brooklyn, and you it's a it's a hike, a little bit of a hike from the nearest yeah. train station. It's, but people showed up in this into this warehouse, with very minimal staging and just packed it in. Yeah, and that's just the summer the summer shows. I yeah. mean, it's, um, yeah, it's it's a really I don't know I don't know too many anything actually mm -hmm. that that has come together at that scale. Um, so so quickly um but so yeah well being able to have a varied kind of a varied schedule like i'll do something like that and then the same day i played with um this group of dancers called the lovelies um where i was their sort of their musical uh musical uh, collaborator mm -hmm. just improvising on my viola um and that's a totally different, <laughs> really? totally different brain to come from where it's like, all right, you have to make this soundscape kind of thing with some melodies coming through. And sometimes I add, you know, vocal or whistle, actually some whistling that day, which is kind of <laughs> cool. But um, yeah, where you have to do something completely different every time. Um, I don't know. That's the kind of day I like to have. I. I don't, the whole, the idea of actually showing up at the same place for work, I think it gives me a lot of anxiety <laughs> to really think about that. Yeah, um, me too. <laughs> and yeah, to, yeah, I don't know. That that was something I, I got worked in the admissions office at University of Michigan. And after, after doing that for, I think I did that for three months. I was like, I can't do it. 
four hours a week on Tuesday is just way too much like for me. For this. <laughs> like I just, it was so ridiculous how, cause it was, it was an office and I had a phone and I had to write down messages and help people figure out what they were doing for, uh, you know, visits and stuff like that. But I don't know, there's something immediately, it felt like I was working, you know, four times that amount. Um, but yeah, having having a such a varied schedule has kind of forced my playing to develop a lot, I feel. Um and me personally too for performance. You know, if it's if it's you're mixing things up every day, it's like you have to bring it. You know, there's mm-hmm. no no fear kind of a thing. And that's been really good for me personally. I mean, that was a when I was learning how to play, it was like I'm you know, I'm in the same environment every day and have the same worries, but something about, and maybe this is a musician's thing, like we, we get a little OCD or something about yeah. various things. It's very sort of a therapeutic thing. So it's always a new self sort of re-examination and you go through the, the same process again, maybe, but, but in a different way, like, like I was saying before. Yeah, can't get enough of it. <laughs> I do not want to. Can't. I really don't want to live anywhere else. Yeah. <laughs> like it's vacations suck, but like I like I like working. I mm-hmm. like I like working and playing. So um, let's kind of wrap things up, power things down, mm. if you will. Um, <clears throat> I guess like we've been talking about, you work a lot, doing a lot of different things. So. Where can people find you um, on first on the social medias oh, and right. then um, also maybe some some things that you're doing over the next couple months that you kind of wanted to, you know, promote yeah. a little bit. Um, the best place to find you can pretty much find every all my social media things and some some videos I've done um, on my website, which is trevernew.com. That's easy. And it, uh, <laughs> yeah, it has like, I got like Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, it's um, is all there. Um, and then, you know, I have some videos on the site and I'll be to update my, uh, events page, but there'll be, you know, a listing of things I've, things I'm about to do and things I've done in the past. Um, and yeah, it's always, if anybody wants to check out the teaching videos, I really do enjoy feedback about those. Cause I'm, I'm, that's I'm teaching that in real life too. Like mm-hmm. that's what my students get, and I work with groups occasionally, and working on uh, actually developing a program for orchestra. So, wow, yeah, that that's coming up. Stay yeah. tuned. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, so, and on YouTube, I mean, if if you just wanted to go to YouTube, it's what youtubecom slash Trevor New. Um, it is a really long oh no number thing. Oh, yeah, they don't no. allow they don't allow that anymore. Oh, you to change the ones that. that you want. I'm gonna cut all of this out. It's yep. gonna be so great. <laughs> <laughs> so go to my web. <laughs> <laughs> so, so trevornew.com for all things Trevor related. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Have my schedule um, and everything there. Well, uh, when you get this orchestra program thing going, you have to come back and talk about it. Oh yeah. I'm I'm pretty stoked about it. Still in the works, but yeah. Well, when it's done or when it's ready to go, let's talk. All right. Thanks so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. Um, Yeah. Thanks for, for having me. It's really, it's a nice thing to sort of sit down and hash out the last, I haven't talked about any of this stuff in a while, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. So cool.